Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well. Welcome to today's video, which is on Frank Lampard's opportunity to seek revenge on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer for the 4-0 loss in the league because Chelsea are playing Manchester United in the cup this week. It's the Stamford Bridge. Chelsea are a much different side than they were at the beginning of the season, the first game of the season, even though that wasn't really a 4-0, let's be honest. The Blues are on a seven-win running streak. They're looking great. Pulisic scoring hat-tricks. The kids are all right. They're beating Ajax away. Can they beat Manchester United at home? United have just got a decent result, but still, we're going to get into all of that today in today's match preview. A quick notice to let you guys know this video is brought to you by Akatips. Akatips is an online platform that helps give you the edge when betting on football. It's the only type of website of its kind for football fans. They've got a really good record in terms of giving winning advice. And if you want to check it out, you can have a 14 day free trial, which is pretty dope. Click the link in the description to check it out for free. Also, if you're new to football therapy, please do hit the subscribe button and make sure you click the bell notification bell because i upload every single day and if you want to help me out please do like the video right then chelsea are favorites for this game now if you looked at this fixture pre-season and took everything into account you know lampard being a new coach only being a few months into the job having a transfer ban not having eden hazard or they're gonna solskjaer making a few big signings you'd put united as favorites but things haven't turned out that way and chelsea are the team in form and united are the team in crisis Although, they have just beaten Norwich away, I think 3-1, which is a pretty good result for them. I actually thought Norwich might do something against them, but no, they remain bad. <laughs> United actually had a pretty decent result against Liverpool as well, all things considered, stopping their winning run and the first team to make them drop points. Obviously, a very different approach to how they played Norwich, and Frank Lampard and Chelsea have to be ready for both these potential approaches from Solskjaer. So then, how's this game going to go? What formations are the managers going to use? How's the tactical game plan going to pan out? Well, we can only speculate, and I'm about to do that, so let's open the analysis screen. Boom! Next to me, you have the two lineups that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer sent out against Liverpool and against Norwich respectively. As you can see, two very different approaches. Against Liverpool, he played a counter-attacking system, pragmatic back 5-5-3-2, five, five, with the two forwards being Rashford and James, and they kind of played as inside forwards. This was actually really, really smart from Solskjaer because James and Rashford played between the spaces of the fullbacks and the centre backs, and obviously Liverpool's fullbacks in Robertson and Trent Alexander Arnold are always way up the pitch and they leave space between the centre backs. And when you've got two really fast players like James and Rashford, it made sense to try and split them and get in behind on the counter attack. And generally, that worked for Manchester United. The other tactical approach they used away at Carrow Road against Norwich was more of a dominating one. I think at this point Solskjaer was like, right, well obviously my counter-attacking uh, plan generally works, and Norwich are an attacking side, so he'd probably think in his head, well, we're away from home, I'd quite like to do that again. Solskjaer was under pressure, and he absolutely needed to try and dominate a relegation side, basically, or a side that's in the relegation zone. You know, you're Manchester United at the end of the day. So he did try and impose himself with the quality that United do have, you know, Martial's back in the side. They played a 4-2-3-1 with, you know, Rashford, Dan James, Martial. It's good. It's a good side, dude. Especially with players like McTominay settling in now and stuff. And it worked. They got their groove back. They scored three goals. They looked very good for the most part. And but again, Norwich really isn't a good barometer for how good a team is. But they are good, United. But it's interesting how Solskjaer is going to view Chelsea as an opponent. Obviously, Chelsea are closer to Liverpool in terms of quality of opposition. And I guess play style as well. Chelsea want to keep the ball and they want to play attacking direct football. So you'd probably think away from home at Stamford Bridge, Solskjaer might be thinking, you know what, this 5-3-2 probably would work well again if we want to get something out of this game. It would work the same. Obviously, Chelsea are better in transition than they were early doors in the season and leaving less space between the defensive and midfield line. But... Dan James and Marcus Rashford, especially Dan James, are incredibly fast and they would for sure try and exploit some spaces between the midfield and defensive line on the counter attack. So I could probably see him going for the 5-3-2 formation. Right, let's switch over to some Chelsea stuff. For me, Frankie Lampard is going to play a 4-3-2. 
free regardless. Um, I don't think he's even going to play the 4 2 3 1 because I feel like the 4 3 3 will offer complete balance in this game. Really, it's just how they react to the opposition tactical approach. Chelsea are going to need an absolutely solid midfield, so I feel like. People like Jorginho and Kovacic will have to start again and have a quick turnaround from the weekend. If N'Golo Kante is fit, a midfield three of Jorginho, Kovacic and Kante would be formidable and someone like Mount would just have to be dropped for this game, in my opinion. Think about how good that midfield played against Liverpool. I don't know, maybe if you're playing with the ball more because it is against a Manchester United that won a counter-attack, then maybe Mount does keep his place and you don't need a third more controlling midfielder. Do you know what I mean? Like, because I have a feeling they might try and be passive in this game, Manchester United away from home, if they do play the counter-attacking side. I mean, if they go for a 4-2-3-1, then Chelsea should look to control the midfield with players that are better retaining possession but if not someone direct and attacking like Mason Mount would be ideal. I think actually the most important starter <laughs> which sounds funny I know you could argue you know Tammy Abraham or whatever or someone I think Willian's a really really important player in this game in terms of recovery pace on the wing because Chelsea have to be solid in defensive transition losing the ball and then trying to get the ball up to Rashford, James or even Martial if they play a 4-2-3-1 it's being able to get back quickly. So Willian on the right flank, he can get back quickly. He's got really good defensive work rate. Tomori absolutely picks himself in this game because there's no one better in the Chelsea side with, with recovery pace than Fakayo Tomori, so he's in. And Chelsea really just need to play their own game here. I think they can absolutely break Manchester United down and score goals. I don't see a problem with that there. You know, whether it's Willian, hudson Adoy, Christian Pulisic, the hat-trick hero. Batshuayi might start this game because it's a cup game, he'll score goals, especially if Christian Pulisic is starting, which he might start again if he's good to go, um, although you could probably see Callum Hudson-Odoi being rotated in for this game, but what I'm saying is Batshuayi could start, it's a cup game, you know, he might, if Frank might go all guns blazing, but he could give Michi a start, and then the Dortmund chemistry connection of Pulisic and Batshuayi could be seen from the start of a game, which would be lovely. But other than that, it's anyone's guess in terms of personnel how seriously Lampard's going to take it. Especially now they're joint third on points in the Premier League. Is he going to, you know, go hard in the Premier League all the season and see how well he does? And just basically rotate more in the cups? Yeah. And obviously go hard in the Champions League. Like I said, for Chelsea, it's just being careful on transition. And if they play their own game at home, they'll score goals. They just need to be careful of letting Marcus Rashford and Dan James run in behind for me. That's the biggest threat Manchester United offer. And obviously, uh, lately, you can't leave McTominay with the ball 20 yards out of the box because he will shoot, apparently, and score goals. So they need to be lucid to that. Anyway, that's enough tactical speculation for the moment. Let's get rid of this analysis screen. Huge game, really. I mean, a huge game for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Obviously, they had that okay, pretty decent result against Liverpool. Good result away against Norwich. And if they win this, the crisis theme would probably almost be dropped, you know, like, in my opinion. For Chelsea, not as big because, you know, you'd argue they're at home, so they'd like to win. But there's such a feel-good factor around Chelsea at the moment. They're doing well in the Champions League. They're doing well in the Premier League bread and butter do you know what I mean so Frank could probably afford to rotate a little bit in this game and be like look go and impress me if Man United win you know it's bad we want to win every single game but it's not the end of the world um let's just see what we can do here go out and express yourselves but it's a bit more of a serious game for Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer now it would be really good for Chelsea to win this obviously and advance through and you know basically seek revenge on Manchester United for the 4 0 loss. Now, I want to repeat that I do subscribe to the theory that was not a 4 0 game. If you look at the expected goal metric for that game, I think Chelsea almost had more expected goals from open play or something than United. I know they had penalties and stuff. Regardless, it was a poor reflection on how the game went. But people won't remember that. People will remember the 4 0 scoreline. Just as United fans remembered the 4-0 scoreline of Antonio Conte's Chelsea when he first met Jose Mourinho's Manchester United. Now, that result was probably more striking than the one at the beginning of this season because of the nature of it. No Eden Hazard, Lampard's first game, he's only been a coach for a few months. But still, 
it sucked. Sure, Chelsea will be looking to seek revenge, more so in the Premier League in the reverse fixture in the league, but still, this is an opportunity to really impose themselves on Manchester United. So, regardless to maybe Frank Lampard doesn't see the cups as that important, you know, I hope he doesn't take this Pochettino route of don't, not seeing it that important, yet he's never won a trophy as a manager. I know Lampard's literally been a manager for months and Pochettino has been for years. So hopefully Frank Lampard does see it as an opportunity to get his first trophy. And let's be honest, man, Frank Lampard loves winning trophies. <laughs> so I'll be interested to hear what you think about this game. Do you think Frank Lampard's going to take it really seriously and go 100% hard? Or do you think he's going to take it as an opportunity to rotate and be like, impress me, guys, you know? Because if he really, really, really had wanted it as a must win, he'd keep his more settled side. But he wants an opportunity to see the other kids. So what do you think? Get down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. Guys, if you've enjoyed today's video, please do like the video. And remember to subscribe if you are new. You can join the Football Therapy Discord server by ki click kicking. Don't kick anything. Clicking the other link in the description. And you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram. I'm doing that thing again where I forget how to talk. So let's end the video. <laughs> you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry I don't. I love me baby.